Hey guys, I'm Jinjinx, one of the Monster Hunter Math Guys. I figured I would go ahead and share this solo strat I found that is very useful and can get you about 15 minute clear times on average. Which is really good if you just want to get him over and done with because he's not the most fun fight. Also, thank you to Jim Farai for informing me about the run which used this strat. Which was done by Fometo, who I believe originally got from that guy with no account. Either way, all three of them will have their channels in the description. Essentially, I just took that strategy and switched it up a little bit to make it a bit more safe and consistent for someone who doesn't necessarily have speedrunner skills. So the strategy here is basically you use Glutton at the beginning, you throw on Tempura Mantle and you just use it to shoot the pimples. The spot you are seeing me stand right now is a very safe spot, unless it does the 360 explosion, you can dodge most of the hits right there. The set is a completely standard Glutton set, except for I have replaced one attack deco with a fortified deco. The reason for this is because you cannot switch sets until you cart. Now, when we do switch sets, we're going to be grabbing a cluster set. The reason for this is because clusters are explosive damage, and explosive damage still deals full damage to Octemp but Zora's dead pimples. And all of that extra free damage makes Area 2 a lot shorter. So this is where my strategy diverges from Fumetto's. We go for the back pimple after taking care of the center pimple. The reason for this is because it's a lot easier for us if we do it this way because Tempura Mantle will still be up if you are very quick about your damage. Fumetto's routing is a bit different, he goes to the one in the front afterwards, and his routing definitely makes more sense from a speedrunning perspective, but because he doesn't get to use the Tempura Mantle on two different pimples at once, he has to do a lot more dodging and stuff, and I find this way just more consistent. You don't necessarily have to use Glutton here, any high damage build will work, Glutton just happens to be very good at breaking pimples. But whatever weapon you do end up using, just make sure you do have Fortify slotted into your build, and make sure your cluster build also has Fortify. As well as Heavy Artillery too, naturally. Anyway, this is just more pimple shooting, so let's go ahead and fast forward a bit. Alright, so after we finish that pimple, we're gonna go around the side and make our way over to the last pimple left. When you get over here, don't forget to pick up some stones if you haven't earlier so we can drop some rocks. The rocks only deal 500 damage each, which is like half of a full cannon load, but it's still free damage, so you might as well. Alright, so this final pimple is the reason why we decided to bring a shield with us. We don't have our Tempura Mantle anymore, and to be honest, Rocksteady would just get us killed anyway, so we just use the shield to block every time we're about to get hit by lava. Just like with the Ump of the Pimple, the spot we're standing in right now is a common dead zone of a lot of different blast attacks, so you can oftentimes not have to block. If you're using a different high DPS option, like say a Joe Switch Axe or something, and you're using Rocksteady, you can just use Health Augment and just kind of unga bunga your way through. But the DPS on Glutton is very nice for this because we can break all three pimples before Nurg even shows up. So here is something interesting, this is when Zora uses a charge attack. So interesting thing is if you block this hit, you actually end up getting launched out like that. But there have been times where I ate the hit instead and I think the invincibility frames maybe not get launched out, I'm not 100% sure on that though. But this is actually a good thing for us because this allows us to go ahead and knock down this pillar over here which is a free 1000 damage, and we would have missed it otherwise. Actually, the timing of passing by the pill and the timing of that charge attack seem to always line up pretty much perfectly, which is really nice. Alright, so you can just go ahead and knock down that rock for another 500 damage, easy peasy, and then just hop down and then finish off breaking that pimple. As soon as it's broken, we immediately start climbing up so we can get to where Nurg spawns as soon as possible. It's very important to fight and kill Nurg as soon as possible. Zora will not start moving again until you beat Nurg. And the longer you take to actually go and fight Nurg, the more likely he will have black spikes, and the more difficult the fight will be, and then the longer the fight will be, and then the longer you have to wait until Zora moves again. On our way over to him, we can just go ahead and break that rock as well while we're at it. It is technically possible to drop it on him, but the timing's a little weird and I don't really think it's worth worrying about. Anyway, fight this guy like normal, just beat the crap out of him. Ah, 
Alright, so about a minute after the intro cinematic for No Gigante arriving happens, he will fly away because Zoro's changing positions. Immediately start climbing up here so that you can get to the spot where he lands more quickly. Also, we have tried flashing him here so many times, he seems to be uninterruptible during that animation. So this is where the fight gets fun, because Zoro will be periodically shooting lava howitzers at you. At this point, the important thing is you need to make sure you die at some point. Which is why you see me not healing at any point during this fight. Ideally, you want to cart after you kill Nergi. And this is not too difficult to do if you can fight at low health, because after Nergi is repelled, then Zoro will always shoot a lava howitzer right afterwards. Eat that, easy cart. Either way, if you die beforehand, don't worry about it too much because you can just come back and kill Nergi with clusters. And if you don't manage to die to the lava howitzer afterwards, just throw some mega bombs down or try to stand over a lava pit. Anyway, at this point Fortify is activated, so switch to your cluster set with Fortify on it. Really not that much to explain here, just use clusters and wyvern ammo and your sticky ammo. Point here is just to throw as much damage as you possibly can. And for those of you who weren't counting, that was two spare shot procs before I ran out of ammo. Yes, I was not joking about my RNG in the bow meta builds video. Alright, so for a very efficient sequence for this phase, first thing you do is you turn and fire this cannon at Zora. Then you run down to the cannon that your palico has already preloaded for you. Turn this one and then also fire it at Zora. Next you want to run to the very last cannon over here that has also been preloaded, but also be sure to grab a binder right here. Then you just turn this cannon and you also fire it at Zora. Now it's time for some secret strats! See, if you jump down right here, it's actually faster than running all the way over to the other side. And so then you can just turn this cannon a little bit more and then fire it again. After this though, Zora's gonna be using his charge attack, so we need to get to the Dragonator ASAP. Also another secret strat, when you jump down here, if you use an attack, then it kills the landing animation. Also, opening the book and closing it's actually faster than sheathing a heavy pokemon. <laughs> anyway, interrupt his charge attack with a Dragonator, and then pretty much the rest of this is just shooting cannons at him. Also, for those of you who didn't know, you don't need Pro Transporter for a cannon build because rolling is going to be just as fast. Just be careful on this cannon right here because sometimes you can roll over the ledge right there. And then you end up falling into the stairwell to the brig or whatever that thing in a ship is called. Pretty much the only time you stop shooting cannons is when Zora starts to charge his attack. You can just go ahead and shoot a binder arrow at him and it'll cancel it. Technically, if you're going for speed, you don't even have to worry about stopping anything other than the first charge attack. Because if you got the clusters off earlier, he won't have enough time to break your barrier before you kill him. However, I like to stop his charge attacks because I have terrible spare shot RNG and so the cannons down here won't be enough to kill him. So I like having the front cannons he normally destroys with his charge attack still available to use later. So if you had good spare shot RNG earlier, he will die on these cannons. However, I did not. So just head topside and just run down the line firing off all the cannons that should be fully loaded from the NPCs. I see Zoro about to use his charge attack, which means he'll tremor me, so I just throw my rocks to the just cause. But this cannon ends up killing him anyway. Alright guys, so that is how you kill Arc Tempered Zora in 15 minutes consistently. You can see this run went 1545, and I mean, you saw how bad my spare shot RNG is. 
If I had gone even a few extra clusters off, I would have saved myself at least 30 seconds to a minute just because I wouldn't have to go up top side to fire more cannons. Also guys, I wanted to quickly show off a very fun strategy you can use in a group. So when Zora rams the barrier with his head, you can climb on it like this. While you're waiting, you can beat on him a bit, but you want to jump onto his back over there. Then you jump down once, and you climb over to the side. When you get over here, this is essentially his shoulder pad. Weirdly, his shoulder here doesn't take damage, but as you can see, I'm actually gaining gauge from hitting it. Anyway, you generally want to stay away from the ledge until you can jump down. It's possible for his actual shoulder to push you through the floor because of glitchy collision. Then you just hop down here and you just beat the crap out of his belly. The reason why we're using Switch Axe here is because it's not only one of the highest DPS melee options, but it has this unique mechanic where your amped file explosions actually trigger off of your teammates. So even though there's only three of us, we're actually able to flinch lock Zora here so he can't even laser beam the barrier. You do want to be careful though, the collision detection is really glitchy over here. It's part of the reason why I have Glider Mantle because I can fly back to the arm if I need to. The only issue with this strategy is that if Zora gets restrained by an NPC or a player, then you will all fall off. The NPCs aren't that much of a problem because as long as you are dealing enough damage, you'll keep him flinch locked so he won't actually be able to use his laser beam, which is what triggers the NPCs to use binding arrows. But you do have to make sure your whole team is on board, otherwise, well, they'll knock you off the arm. It's honestly a YOLO as hell strat, but it does work very well. I mean, we got a sub 20 clear with three people and this was honestly a really sloppy run. Also, another shout out to Vanov and ID for doing this run with me. It was a lot of fun and they are both excellent speedrunners, so I will have links to their channels in the description. Either way, thanks for joining us guys. Hopefully this will make Arctep and Zoro more fun or at least faster for you guys. Builds will be in the description. And if you have any questions, don't be afraid to leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video or if it has helped you get your Arc Tempered Zora tickets, because really who wants to grind that much of it, then be sure to like the video. And we'll be having our next in the console meta series coming out very soon, as well as our guide to KT for PC. So be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell icon down there to be notified as soon as any of our new videos come out. Either way guys, Tuna and I will see you in the next video. Happy hunting hunters! Bye!